Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. So I was watching all this funny stuff that's going on around, you know, pistol lights and weapons lights. And then I was going down another rabbit hole where they were talking about new shooters and um, getting them into a gun like an AR-15 without giving them some expertise and then them running into some issues and the gun not being as uh, reliable as it should be because of cost. Now, that led me to think about what I've always advocated for with New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union is to bring new shooters into the sport. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that a lot of people um, who are anti-gun are very much um, misinformed. They're only informed by what they see in movies. They're only informed by what they see in media, uh, the news. Um, that they, they believe things like the term full semi-automatic um, as it being a machine gun. They believe things that, you know, you can add a part to the exterior pieces of a, of a firearm and make it a fully auto automatic machine gun. Um, they believe that a gun basically can hurt other people on its own because if they didn't believe that they wouldn't actually just try to attack the inanimate object by law and statute but they actually address the real issue and the best way to combat that is with education I found um, I don't know how many shooters I've taken out new to the sport new to the idea period that I've taken out shooting and then change their entire mind on how and what they've been told. Uh, number one, guns only do what you tell them to do. Um, just like a computer, just like a car, just like anything else, it takes manual input from an individual. Um, but that in education you give these new shooters, is it correct? You know. When you look at an AR-15, for instance, one of the things that we guide people to is, you know, they're very inexpensive nowadays to get into, and their reliability is pretty easy, uh, pretty well known, I should say, not pretty easy. I was thinking of the skill needed to make one very uh, reliable or very easy to transfer, uh, even if you actually have to work on said item. But in this particular video, this guy was going through, and he bought a very price uh, right, very cheap AR-15 upper and a very cheap AR-15 lower. And, and they weren't poverty ponies either, so that was something that was uh, caught me off guard. So poverty ponies, for you, those of you not in the know, are uh, Anderson lowers. Um, they're not bad. Um, if any any AR-15 part that is actually made to military spec or to spec will work, even the Chinesium ones, um, they won't, may not last that long or may not be as reliable because of those shortcuts that they made when manufacturing the part. And that's what I was getting to when I was watching this, is he was checking this thing out, and one of the segments of the video was supposed to be where he upgraded the bolt itself to aid in extraction and to change the, the buffer out, uh, the, the weight, if you don't know about the AR-15, there's a weight in, on the spring, the return spring for the bolt carrier group that it slows the bolt down and makes the gun a little more reliable, but it also changes some of the cadence. It, it, it's a big deal and it's something that Stoner spent a long time when he designed the gun to make right. And we messed it up when we tried to do things with this gun that weren't in, originally designed to end the system. Anyway, he replaced these parts in this very inexpensive uh, combination in, in the hopes of showing people how reliable something are uh, was, not are. And what I thought was hilarious is he ended up showing exactly the opposite, sort of, um, that you get what you pay for. And I would say in today's day and age, that is more correct than ever. Um, 
in the AR-15 world, you can get by with buying these cheaper parts. Just understand there's a trade-off. Um, the trade-off is usually they're not made out of the same exact material, or they're not finished in the exact same way, or they are not tested in the exact same way to check for tolerances and quality control. And those things build up to stacking tolerances, which causes uh, reliability issues. And that's what ended up happening with this particular gun, is he ended up proving by dropping a more expensive, but not super out of the realm of, of the average working person, bolt carrier group into this gun and fixing all the problems it, it had instantly. So what what what's the lesson there? Well, when you build buy an AR-15, I would actually recommend building one because it's just a little cheaper. Um, if you don't know, there's a 12% um, excise tax that's on every firearm sold that's fully assembled in the United States. Um, so you save that little bit. Um, the next thing, because here's why you're not going to save the rest. If you buy good quality components, such as barrels, bolt carrier groups, bolts themselves, um, and furniture sets, and that's the heart and soul of the gun. Um, as much as people like to talk about, well, I got this really high-end receiver that does all these other things. Yes, higher-end receivers are really cool, but is it necessary to make the gun reliable? Not necessarily. What you get in added features with those AR-15s that you uh, parts or guns are better quality controls, better components, um, and little attention to details and little weird places that make up make a a change to how you shoot it. It improves life is the best way to put that. When you have when you settle for something a little cheaper, what you do is you sacrifice those added benefits. Um, are they necessary? No, not necessarily. It just makes the experience better. Um, it makes your training kind of nicer. Um, and it adds some longevity to some of the components. Um, that said, it's not 100% necessary. You know, For someone who's getting new into the sport, who's getting into the shooting um, realm in general, Maybe not spending three grand on an AR-15 the first time out is, is a thing. You know? um, it's taking me, I have always been an AK guy, um, full disclosure, and getting into the AR world was kind of an accident um, because how that started was because of my brother, actually. My brother had a couple AR-15s, and every time we took them out to the range, he always seemed to have issues with them. And me talking to my friends who were in the military, um, things didn't add up. Um, why was the, his gun not working as well? Turns out it really was a lot of have, having to know how to train him, my brother, on just basic lubrication of different parts of the gun. Because the AR-15 requires a little bit of lubrication in some places that you wouldn't necessarily think of as a hunter or a, sh a normal shooter who's new to an AR-15. Um, once those issues were done, his gun ran perfectly, and so did mine. Um, when I say perfectly, I mean reliable. But my gun, uh, my first AR-15, was maybe a 3 MOA gun. Okay. And that's because I used cheaper components because I really wasn't trying to build this high-end gun because this was a, uh, a range toy for me. It was nothing I would ever considered at the time um, a go-to-war gun or something that I, if the ball dropped and I had one rifle to pick up, that wasn't my first instinct. It was usually my, one of my Kalashnikovs. Um, so I upgrade just like everyone else does who gets into AR-15s. I upgraded some pieces, parts, components in my second build. And my second build ran even better. 
um, I, I neglected or I discarded those ideas of trying to get something similar to what the military had and started going towards what is going to fit me in the way I shoot in the way I train and I, I settled on I think Magpul furniture and I got Palmetto State uppers and lowers um, I assembled the uppers and lowers but I still used mostly Palmetto parts on my my second build and amazingly the first gun that I had built, the first AR-15 I built, I had a gas key problem. The key, gas key wasn't properly staked. And that's part of buying the cheaper bolt carrier grip. So in the second one, um, I kept the bolt carrier group, and it ran flawlessly the entire time that I had it. Then I bought an a, a Bravo Company bolt carrier group. Better parts, better components, basically what the military uses. That's something that always throws a gun guy into a tizzy or a gun girl because it means it probably works like it's intended to. Not that it's better, but that it works. So I threw it in that build and got even more reliability out of it. Okay, and when I say more reliability is... The gas uh, rings on an AR-15 have a duty cycle. You want to replace them because they wear. They're a wear item, just like they're like a piston on a car. Um, and if you're not trying to over lubricate your uh, bolt and everything else, you, they'll wear a little bit. And me being anal, not necessarily saying that I needed to replace them all the time. Um, the quick test for new shooters is take the bolt carrier group out, extend the bolt out like it it would be, set it on a table, and if the bolt carrier group slides forward and hits the table, it's time to replace those rings. They're not expensive. They're cheap to have. Keep an extra set as a new shooter. This is some one of those things you're going to need eventually, so you probably should have a few of these for your, your gun. Anyway, then I decided I wanted to upgrade again. So I upgraded to what I call so lovingly, and this is only my third AR-15 build of my own, was my what I call my John Wick build. And it has some pieces, parts that are cheaper or more priced in a working man's uh, budget. And then there's a lot of Gucci parts on it. And what I mean by that is to get John Wick's look, you had to do some things to um, adhere to the look. For instance, most of the furniture is Bravo Company. Okay. Um, there's one Magpul piece I, I sacrificed for because I didn't like the uh, front for, front foreign grip that John Wick uses uh, as much as I like this one. And the other thing I sacrificed on, which I liked better anyway, was he uses key mod on his and I used M lock on mine. And I just went ahead and bought a Palmetto State Armory forend and put it on there, aluminum forend. And it looks very close to what John Wicks did already then and has that same flair so I can put all my other stuff on it. But instead of having the crappy key mod system, I actually have a system that works like, you know, MLOC. Um, but the, what I'm getting at, what I'm trying to, and it's a very circular way of thinking and talking, is that that knowledge doesn't come to you without having a mentor. Having more people I could talk to, even on the forums, but in person, is what we need to bring to the, to the shooting sports. You know, that will build the community you need, and with that community, we resist these tyrannical ideas. And we... <clears throat> have a chance at fighting to keep our rights. Like, share, subscribe, most importantly, be great.